all right uh, good morning everyone let's get started so today we will conclude our discussion on uh, the theory of parsing so in the last couple of lectures we were uh, looking at uh, lr1 parsers and today we will see an example of uh, how we can uh, specify the grammar specification uh, how we can write a grammar specification which can be supplied to an lr1 parser generator such as uh, the tool bison for the project you are using uh, the antler parser generator antler is a bottom up a top down parser generator yeah. so for the project you are using uh, antler and it's a top down parser generator top down parser generator and uh, and today in today's class we will see how we can uh, specify the grammar uh, which can be supplied to an lr1 parser generator such as bison we will work with a very simple expression grammar uh, so the program that we are going to see today what it does is it reads an expression and it uh, generates that uh, prints that expression in the postfix form let's see uh, let's first use let's see what the program does first and then we will uh, so here is the program and uh, we'll do remove calc and doing a make and the executable gets generated uh, in uh, calc dot in, uh, in an executable file called calc uh, one thing i would like you to note here is uh, you no know, you see that there is a warning here that there are five shift reduce conflicts. So some of these, uh, what Bison does is when there is a shift reduce conflict, by default it uh, takes the shift action, and uh, or rather Bison generates a parser, which by default uh, lean towards shift action. So when you write a, when you compile your grammar specification using the Bison parser generator, you have to go and see what these shift reduce conflicts are by looking at a file which consists of the whole lr1 automaton and then bison will also tell you in this particular state you are getting shift reduce conflict you have to go and observe that specific shift reduce conflict and see whether it is safe to take a shift action as the default and if it is not safe how do we uh, take care of that uh, shift reduce conflict we have to come up with a plan so in this particular uh, grammar, we are all right with these five shift reduce conflicts. Uh, there is no issue. So we just leave it as it is. And uh, let's run the program and uh, dot calc. So like, for example, if I give 12 plus 13, it says uh, it prints that infix expression in the postfix form. 12 plus 13 times. No, so again, uh, it, this is uh, what is printed is the postfix uh, form of the given input uh, uh, expression in the infix form. So now let's look at the specification, grammar specification. Uh, so there is a lexer file, unlike in Antler, where in a single file where you specify both micro syntax and macro syntax. In the case of uh, when we use Bison, we use bison tool along with the flex tool. Flex is a lexical analyzer generator. So we use uh, flex tool for uh, lexical analyzer generator and we use uh, bison tool for uh, parser generator. And these two tools are designed in such a way so that they can work together with each other. 
And uh, so in this particular, uh, so what you are seeing right now, this is calc.l file. This is the micro syntax specification. And uh, you can see uh, on line seven, there's a regular expression which identifies uh, uh, integer literals uh, in the input stream. And the token type is an associated token type for integer literal is int underscore literal. And the other token types are, uh, they are essentially punctuation symbols, plus, minus, star, divide operator, ternary operator, left parenthesis, right parenthesis, colon. And then on line 16, uh, you, know, you have white space uh, characters. When there are white spaces, you don't do anything. You just consume them. So on, you can see on each line, you see if you encounter this token, then uh, uh, this is what uh, the corresponding action that is being taken. And uh, so what happens is, uh, so this, uh, this lexical specification, based on this lexical specification, a function called as yylex is automatically generated. And what the parser does is, the parser keeps calling this yylex function again and again. And every time a yylex function is called, the yylex function extracts a token from the input stream and supplies it back or returns it back to the parser. On line seven, you can see uh, the yylex function along with the returning uh, the token type as integer literal, it is also doing something else. It is also doing, this is, there is a side effect for the yylex function when the current token is an integer literal. So whatever the token that is extracted from the input stream, whatever the word that is extracted from the input stream, it is present in the string yy text. So like for example, if the input in the input string, so if you have something like 12 plus 13, and when yylex is called for the first time, this 12 will be present in this string yy text. And what this a2i, so what we are doing is when the current token is an integer literal, we are not only telling the, pars, the parser that the current token is an integer literal, uh, through a side effect, we are uh, putting this, uh, we are converting this yy text, this uh, 12 in the, which is there in the form of text, we are converting it to an integer and we are keeping it in this global variable called as yyl val, so that the parser, uh, you know, it knows what is the value of the integer literal. So when the parser gets int underscore literal as a token type, it goes and looks at the global variable yyl val to see what is the exact value of that integer literal. So that is what is happening here. And then on line 17, you can see that, uh, you know, there's a global variable called line number. We are incrementing the line number and uh, we are returning uh, the new line character. That is when you hit a new line character, uh, you increment the line number and return it back to the parser. That is also a, a uh, valid token. And if you have any characters apart from all these things so on line 19, uh, we recognize, we say they are, they are unrecognized characters and that's the error that we print on the screen. So this is a lexical specification for our simple uh, expression language. Now, look, now let's look at the uh, parser specification. So if you see the parser specification on line seven, uh, uh, you are telling, so line seven, eight, nine, ten, uh, we are uh, specifying all the valid terminal symbols uh, in the language. So int underscore literal, it's a valid terminal symbol or a valid token type. Similarly, question plus minus star forward slash division operator, all these are valid terminals in our expression language. So on line eight, nine, and 10, we are not only telling that these are valid terminals, we are telling them that they are operators and uh, they are left associated. And, uh, and not only that, what we are telling is, uh, uh, so line on line 10, we have, uh, uh, so we are also specifying the precedence uh, here. Like, uh, so on line nine, we have plus and minus. So both plus and minus, they have same precedence and they are left associative. 
and star and uh, forward slash division operator, they are occurring in a later line. Hence, the semantics is that they have higher precedence. But between uh, the multiplication and division, uh, they have the same precedence and they are left associate. So this is how we specify precedence and associativity in uh, uh, in Bison kind of parser generators. In this grammar, this is how we specify the precedence and associativity properties. So what is our program? Our program is a sequence of lines. It can be a line, it can be an empty line or uh, uh, input followed by a line. So our uh, program, our expression language, it's a sequence of lines and uh, the rules, the, the productions on line 15 and line 16, that's what they say. An input can be an empty input or it can be input followed by a line. What is a line? A line can be an empty line in the sense uh, you, you can just have a new line character in a line or uh, you can have expression followed by a line. We will look at line 21 a bit later. Okay, so let's see if you go back to this program, if I just simply press enter, it's a valid string, this simple enter, it's a valid line in the expression language that we are working with. And what is an expression? For the time being, ignore the actions that are there associated with each of the substitution rules. And uh, an expression can be, you take left parenthesis, EXPR and right parenthesis. So when you keep this, uh, you know, like the kind of, this says that uh, this is a valid uh, token type or this is a punctuation symbol that we can expect uh, from the uh, lexical uh, analyzer. EXPR followed by right parenthesis. Similarly, an expression on line 25, we are saying an expression can be two expressions connected by the plus operator, so on and so forth. And on line 32, you can see an expression can be an integer letter. So this is how this whole uh, grammar for our expression language is specified. And on line uh, 37, you can see the main function. So when the parser is generated, so and when we compile it, and when we execute the parser, uh, this main function gets invoked. In the main function, we are printing, we are giving this prompt, that is what we are getting here. And then uh, the parser uh, the parser module is present in the function yWayParse. And this yWayParse is automatically generated by the Bison parser generator. All right. So, so now let's see uh, what are these actions. You know, like uh, in the, the way this LR1 parsing happens is via a sequence of uh, shift reduce actions that uh, we have seen an example of that in the last class. And that is how exactly uh, the YY parse function that is generated uh, also handles the parsing. Let's take an example, but what happens is uh, if you just do the parsing, it is not uh, good enough for us. Uh, so we not only want to know whether the expression is a valid expression described by the, the cont given context free language, as is, we also want to construct an AST for an expression so that once we construct an AST for the expression, then we can, uh, uh, then we can do multiple passes on the AST to print the expression in post fix form or evaluate the expression or print the expression in prefix form or do a type analysis on the AST, all these things we can do. We have seen how we specify the AST node structure in C a uh, couple of classes back. Just to recall though, uh, you can see this is the structure of the AST node from line 18 to line 38. This is how the AST node looks like. So there is a field called uh, uh, node type, which tells whether the node is a binary operator or a ternary operator or a simple literal value. And then if uh, the node is a binary operator, uh, this particular structure in this union, the binary node gets uh, active. 
and this binary node has three fields one is the operator which tells whether it is an addition operator multiplication operator subtraction operator so on and so forth and this type is uh, the, we specify this uh, binary operator type using the enumerated uh, type this is we have an enumerated type on line 13 uh, so this uh, tells us uh, using this uh, enumerated type we tell uh, what is the kind of uh, the binary operator node it is and then it has a left child and a right child and if it's a ternary operator it will have three children and we don't specify what is a ternary operator type because there is only one kind of ternary operator in our expression language and if it's an integer literal value again there is no type for it it's just to store a lit value and all these three fields two structures and one uh, uh, litval field which is of type integer they are enclosed in a an union because only one of the three will become active depending upon what is the node type and then we have helper functions so you can see get the ast node type this is one uh, binary no ast node binary op this is a helper function which creates uh, which takes as parameters uh, two asts uh, left ast tree right ast tree and then operator and it constructs a new binary operator so uh, it constructs a new ast tree uh, which uh, with the with the required specification like for example here this may point to some tree t1 and uh, the right uh, it may point to some tree t2 so this one may point to something like this and then the operator could be like for example it's an, it's an addition operator so what this AST get AST node the binary op does is it creates an AST node uh, with the addition as the operator left three points to T1 right three points to T2 and then it returns this uh, a pointer to this node as uh, it returns that to the caller function that's what get AST node binary op does same is the case with get AST node ternary or uh, ternary op it takes three parameters uh, and each of these three parameters they corresponds to three subtrees which needs to be joined using a ternary of uh, node and uh, so this lit value it's a it's a leaf it doesn't have any child so like for example if the expression is uh, 12 13 so this node corresponds to an uh, literal node an ast node which holds an integer literal so this, this corresponds to this. So because of that, it doesn't have any children. So this is the summary. And then there is a function called as print postfix, which will, uh, uh, which given a root, it traverses the AST in the postfix uh, form and prints the, the expression in the postfix form. So now let's see what is happening in the parser, in the, in the parser specification. So, you know, like uh, on line 32, you can see that there's a production EXPR goes to int underscore literal. So for example, uh, if the input is something like uh, 12 plus uh, 13, let me see, yeah. So let's say if the input string W is 12 plus 13, then what happens is, uh, if you see the parser stack, so initially 12 will be, so let me start here. Initially 12 will be shifted onto the stack as an integer literal. So it's not 12 that gets shifted, the token int underscore literal gets uh, uh, shifted onto the stack. But what happens is along with the symbol stack, so this is what is called as a symbol stack, uh, along with the symbol stack, uh, the parser maintains what is called as a value stack. So let's say there's a value stack also. So there's a symbol stack and there's a value stack. So the symbol stack actually holds int underscore literal as the, so here actually 12 is not present. So, so here, I am using IL as a shorthand for the symbol in underscore literal. So the symbol IL will be shifted onto the stack. And then here, 
when um, and then what happens is uh, uh, so at, at once IL gets shifted onto the stack, what it does is uh, later on when it looks at plus, uh, this IL gets reduced to EXPR. When this, uh, so this one, so what happens is IL gets shifted onto the stack and then the input pointer moves to plus and the state of the stack moves from here to here. And when the state of the stack moves from here to here, what happens is IL gets popped out and the EXPR symbol gets pushed. I am using capital E as a shorthand for the non-terminal symbol EXPR. But when this reduction happens, the action that is associated with this uh, substitution rule happens. So here what happens is here, we create an integer in AST node, which holds this YYL val. What is this YYL val? The YYL val is the value 12, it holds 12. So we create an AST node, we create an AST node which holds, I'm using this uh, symbol for AST node. So, or uh, rather, yeah, so, okay. So, so I will use this something like this is, uh, let me use a different color for AST node. So I'm using this uh, as, uh, this is an AST node 12. Uh, so this points to this, this points to this. So a AST node 12 will be created in the symbol stack E will be present, but in the value stack, the value stack contains a pointer to the AST node 12. So now again, what happens is after this, uh, the, uh, the plus symbol gets shifted onto the stack. And then, uh, you know, so, and then after that, uh, uh, 13 gets uh, push, shifted onto the stack. And actually 13 is not shifted, integer literal, uh, no, this token IL gets shifted onto the stack. And then now what happens is, uh, this IL gets reduced to EXPR. So now what happens is, this IL, it gets reduced to EXPR. And the state of the stack will be like this. This is G this is plus and this is C, this is the state of the stack. The stack is like this. And then now what happens is, uh, so this one, it points to the AST node 12 and this one, it points to the AST node uh, 13. And uh, the notation, this is the notation that uh, you have to see when we say dollar dollar, what it means is, uh, uh, so push that particular thing onto the stack, whatever that we have uh, uh, obtained, push it onto the stack. So this is the state of the stack uh, after you know, 12 plus 13 uh, is processed. And then after that we will see, uh, so end of file symbol or actually slash and we will see maybe, uh, yeah, so after that, when we see slash n rather than uh, dollar, let me use slash n as the symbol. So the parser wants to do a reduction that is E plus E should be reduced to E. So when it wants to do a reduction by applying this substitution rule, what it is doing is it is calling this function get the AST node binary off. And it is passing the parameter dollar one and dollar three and add. What is dollar one? Dollar one refers to this and dollar two refers to this position and dollar three refers to top of the stack. Dollar three refers to top of the stack, whatever it may be. Dollar three refers to top of the stack. So if you see, so this is dollar three, dollar three refers to top of the stack and dollar one refers to uh, the what is there uh, here and dollar two refers to here, but dollar two doesn't make any sense because there is no value symbol associated with the uh, add operator that is present on the symbol stack. So this is how uh, Bison cleverly provides us a way to uh, access the values associated with different symbols that are pushed on to the symbol stack. So now what happens is, uh, what we are doing is, uh, so we are creating an AST node with add as uh, operator and uh, dollar one and dollar three, uh, whatever the, the subtrees which, uh, uh, which are pointed to by dollar one and dollar three, 
uh, as a subtrees. Okay. And uh, this whole E plus E gets, uh, as a part of reduction, this whole E plus E gets popped and a new, get, a new E gets uh, pushed in. And a new E gets pushed in. So here, the state of the stack after this is this. This is, uh, so E plus E gets popped and E gets pushed in. But what is important here is when E gets pushed in, so we are pushing this new AST node uh, onto the stack. And this AST node looks like this. It is plus, it has 12, and it is uh, 30. And in fact, this 12 and this 12 this is the same node. It's not like a new 12 is created. And this 13 and this 13 node, they are the same. It's not like a new node 13 is created. So now, if you see the value symbol associated with this uh, value associated with this symbol E, that is present on the symbol stack, it points to an AST subtree. So this is how, and then let's uh, keep, uh, let's move a bit further. And uh, so now once the E is present, let's say, uh, now you want to, you see slash N, and you want to push slash N onto the stack. And then you can see here on line 20, there is a substitution rule, expression followed by slash N, it gets reduced to line. So now what we do is uh, we, uh, we pop E slash N from the stack and we push a line onto the stack. Again, we have this, I use capital L to indicate that it is a line. And when that reduction happens, what we are doing is we are calling this a print postfix function. And to the print postfix function, we are pass passing $1 as the parameter. But what is $1? dollar one is nothing but the value that is associated with the symbol E and the value that is associated with the symbol E here is nothing but the root of this uh, AST. It is nothing but the root of this AST. So now what happens is this print postfix function uh, does a post order traversal on the AST tree and prints the in expression in the postfix form. This is how the whole thing happens so beautifully uh, in the, uh, in, in, uh, when we uh, construct a parser using uh, a bottom-up uh, uh, approach. So in Bison, so this is what, this is what, uh, this is the mechanism uh, provided by the, by, provided by the Bison parser generator to see that we can construct an AST as the parsing process proceeds. That is, if you just look at plain parsing, you just do a sequence of shift reduce actions, but then the parser, the Bison parser provides us with uh, these action items. And what these action items does is uh, whenever a reduction happens, they uh, construct uh, a parse tree, parse, a AST uh, in some form, and uh, they store the AST or a pointer to the AST or, or AST subtree on the uh, value stack associated with the simple stack. So by the time the whole parsing is over, what we have is we have a handle for the root of the abstract syntax tree. And once we have the handle for the root of the abstract syntax tree, then great, awesome, we can do many things. And that's the that's our whole goal. As an by as a outcome of the parsing process, we want to construct an AST and we want to get a handle to the root of the AST. And that is this is how the Bison parser generator facilitates uh, the AST construction process. Are there any questions here? I'll take, uh, if there are any questions I will take now. How many of you are with me here? Do you understand how this whole thing is working? Yes, no, maybe. E plus E became E because that is the reduction process, right? There's a substitution rule on line 25. Uh, that is, which says that E goes to E plus E. So when the next input symbol is after 12 plus 13, when we see the new line symbol, the parser knows that uh, by looking at the LR1 automaton, 
that it has to apply a reduction operation that is reduce e plus e to e. And there's another question why expr followed by slash n is popped under that is because if you see line 19, I don't know, let's see. I didn't want to change it because uh, it gets overwritten. So if you see line 19, uh, then what happens is uh, uh, line 19 uh, is expr followed by slash n, it gets reduced to line. So because of that, expr followed by slash n gets uh, popped and uh, line gets uh, pushed. You want e plus e star uh, to be, you want to walk. Uh, so maybe let me try that. Let's see if. Uh, clear what is the question. So after once we get a line. Uh, yeah, so maybe you see line gets. Uh, So the way this whole thing is done is uh, we keep pushing lines onto the, we have input line, 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 line. And uh, in, so I think this action also happens, input followed by line gets reduced to input. There is a good question. So why did we not go one step higher to input after line? What happens there? I think if I am right, uh, we have to check uh, Aditya, but if I am right, what happens is maybe input. Uh, uh, so this is kind of tricky because substitution rule 15 is empty. So I don't know exactly how it uh, happens, but I'm guessing this, I might be wrong. So I'm using capital I for input. Uh, so initially an empty string gets reduced to input and maybe this uh, line gets pushed and uh, the stack becomes input line gets reduced to input again and then you have one you see one more line and then again input line gets reduced to input again so on and so forth this is what i'm guessing so this is my best answer Aditya, for your question so but i have to think about it maybe you can uh, put some actions associated with line 16 and line 15 and see what happens. So Ananya has this question, what happens if it is uh, E plus uh, E star E? So what happens with E plus E star E is, uh, so uh, if I am right, so E plus uh, E, since star has higher precedence, so what happens this uh, the, the stack becomes like this and then if you see the value stack associated with this, okay, let me uh, clear this screen. Uh, so let me use uh, yeah. so let's say, if something like, uh, if it is something like 12 plus uh, 13 times 14, I will not go through the whole thing, but roughly speaking, I think this would, uh, this, this is what will happen. So you will have at some point, the state of the stack will be something like this, E plus E star E. This is the symbol stack.
and this is the value stack and uh, this would be pointing to the AST node 12 and this would be pointing to the AST node 13 and uh, this would be pointing to the AST node 14 and then uh, E star E it gets reduced and uh, so E star E gets popped out from the stack and again uh, an E will be so this will be the state of the stack E plus uh, E uh, and what happens is this uh, this still points to 12 but this will point uh, this will point to an AST node with uh, this is star operator and this would be 30 this would be 14 and uh, this will point to this and then in the next step again one more reduction happens and when when one more reduction happens you have e plus e gets popped out and uh, e will be there and this will be pointing to an AST node like plus with uh, 12 here and star here, 13 here, 14 here. This is what happens. Does it make sense, Ananya? Okay, so now let's get back to our uh, code. So the next idea is uh, on error handling. So you know, like uh, we have seen in the last class that uh, bottom up parsers have this uh, viable prefix property. That is the moment they see a prefix which cannot be extended to a valid string in the language, then immediately the parser says, you know, there is a parsing error, it's a problem. So how do we handle, and it's very bad, right? So when we write a large C program, and uh, the first error you see on line one or line two or line 10, so that's it, the parser says there's an error, and then uh, so the number of times you have to compile in order to just eliminate the syntax errors in your program will be humongous. So it's not, uh, uh, it's not uh, a right thing to do. So in a single pass over the program, we want to report as many errors as possible. In order for that to happen, we need to have error recovery procedures in the parser. So doing error recovery uh, in uh, parser generators, it's actually a bit tricky. Uh, it is uh, prone to many issues, uh, but Bison provides uh, some facility and they can help you uh, to some extent. But if you want really good uh, error handlers, error recovery mechanisms and error reporting mechanisms, error recovery and report. If you want good error recovery and error reporting mechanisms, maybe you may need to write a hand coded parser. Uh, so let's see here on, uh, so in the way uh, one particular approach which Bison provides for error recovery is by providing a special uh, token called as error. So when you are in a particular state and when you see a look ahead symbol, and when you look at it, when you look at, uh, at that look ahead symbol, you can neither take a shift action nor a reduce action. Then that means uh, you are in trouble. So you the so you are in a particular state, and uh, let's say you know like we maintain a parsing stack, right? On the top of the stack you have uh, uh, a state i, and uh, the, that means uh, so the LR1 right now we are in state i of the LR1 automaton, and we have looked at the parser, uh, check the current look ahead symbol. And uh, so after checking the current look ahead symbol, uh, so it doesn't know whether to do uh, shift action or reduce action. Then that means it's a parsing error. And the way the Bison parser uh, uh, helps us to recover from such a state is uh, 
uh, it permits us to uh, add certain uh, error productions. An example of an error production is like this. So on line 21, we have an error production. What this error production does is when things are not going good for you, then a special token called as error token gets generated. And when the error token gets uh, generated, what happens is, uh, you know, like uh, the, the state on the stack it keeps, uh, it gets emptied out. So what the parser does is it pops out uh, I from the stack and uh, until it exposes a state uh, which can uh, do something on looking at the current error token. Okay, so what happens is this is the state of the stack and uh, the state of the stack gets transformed to a different state uh, so that the top of the stack is uh, a state I prime. And when we are in state I prime and uh, if there is an error token, uh, the, the LR1 parser sees, the LR1 parser knows that it has to shift that error token onto the stack. So until such a state is exposed on the stack, what happens is the stack gets cleared. And once it, such a state gets exposed, we shift the error token onto the stack and possibly go to a new state, uh, I double prime. I prime is the exposed uh, state. And then uh, after shifting error uh, uh, symbol onto the stack, the parser goes to the state I double prime. And then when it goes to I double prime, uh, so what it does is if you look at the input, uh, let's say u is what is already consumed and the rest of the string is like this. Uh, what happens is it keeps emptying out, uh, it keeps consuming, ignore, it keeps ignoring the input until it hits a point uh, uh, which, uh, uh, which the state uh, I, pri I double prime knows how to process. That is it either shifts it or uh, it uh, applies some kind of reduction operation. So it does two things. The first thing it does is it keeps emptying the stack until a state I prime, which can accept, which can shift the error token gets exposed. And after that, it keeps uh, you know, clearing up the input uh, uh, buffer uh, until it hits a input token, which it knows uh, how to process by shifting or by applying a reduction. So on line number 21, what happens is, let's say if you have entered an incorrect uh, expression incorrectly, what happens is, uh, you know, whatever that is present before on the stack, it just gets emptied out until error gets, uh, until the state that is there on the stack is ready to shift in the error token. And whatever the rest of the input that is present uh, on the input stream, it gets cleared out until the slash and symbol is uh, encountered at which point slash n gets shifted onto the stack, onto the stack and error followed by slash n gets reduced to line and then you go on to the next line. So this is a nice way to kind of uh, handle errors locally within an expression. So let's see how this works out here in our example. So here, let's say if I say 12, 13 plus, what happens is, uh, you know, like 12 gets shifted onto the stack and after that the parser exp uh, no, uh, experience, uh, expects some kind of operator. This is what I'm guessing will happen. So 12 gets exposed on the stack. So 12 gets reduced to IL uh, and IL gets reduced to expression. And then it, uh, it I think it uh, tries to look for uh, uh, some kind of operator, but it doesn't happen. So the stack gets emptied out, whatever the E that gets that present, no? that is present on the stack, it gets emptied out. And then the error token gets uh, shifted. And once the error token gets shifted onto the stack, so the input uh, expression, all the symbols are uh, skipped until the new line character is hit. And when the new line character is hit, it gets shifted onto the stack. And error followed by new line is gets reduced to line. And then, uh, it knows how to proceed further. And this is what happens. So now if you press this, you can see uh, this, this uh, error is nicely handled. Okay, it says it's an error. Uh, so this error is coming from, uh, there are two places, uh, there are two error handlers that we have invoked that there's one parser error, I'll show you. So whenever there is an error uh, in the parsing, this YY error module gets uh, invoked 
and there is one more thing here when this substitution rule error followed by slash n gets reduced to line we are also printing this uh, error print f error and then we are again uh, generating the prompt for the next so that the next ex expression will be consumed so this is one kind of error handling mechanism that we can use uh, in uh, uh, in bison parser generators by adding special uh, substitution rules or uh, uh, error productions are you with me here on this one all right so let's see so to conclude the discussion uh, i i so while designing your uh, uh, parser antler uh, parser for your programming language it would be great if you have some kind of error recovery and reporting mechanisms simple error recovery and error reporting mechanisms it would be great to have uh, in the for the for the parser that you are designing for your programming language so now let's see how this uh, parse error recovery and the reporting works for uh, top down parsers So if you see again, uh, the, it's not very easy this error recovery. And uh, uh, if you take a parser generator approach, because even if you generate a top, even if you write a top-down parser, but if you use a parser generator approach, whatever the error recovery mechanism that you have, you have to provide uh, in the using the framework that is provided by the parser generator. But if you hand code the whole parser, then everything will be your plan. So in the case of LL1 parsing, like for example, if the current uh, non-terminal symbol to expand is E prime, and if the next symbol is, uh, and if the current look ahead symbol is star, then that means uh, there is a problem uh, because there is no action that we can take. So one way of handling this uh, situation, there are multiple ways to handle this situation. One way of handling this situation is you replace this star with plus. So if you replace this the input star with plus, then you know that you can take this, uh, then you can, uh, then there is an action associated with plus and you can apply that uh, action. So that is one way of uh, uh, error recovery. Another way of error recovery is uh, you insert a symbol uh, plus before star because you know if uh, plus has been there before star, you there is a particular action you can take and you can kind of uh, recursively apply that approach. So one approach is replace the current symbol. That is approach one, replace uh, star uh, with plus. This is approach one. And other approach is insert uh, plus before star that is another approach right now uh, the terminal sim the non terminal symbol to expand is e prime and the current look ahead symbol a w u a v and the current look ahead symbol a is uh, star and the third approach is uh, you keep ignoring the input until you hit a terminal symbol uh, uh, which uh, and when you hit that particular terminal symbol, you know what to do. Like for example, you know star, and after that possibly you may see plus, and if you see plus, you know what to do, that is you apply the substitution. Or uh, no, if you ignore star, the next sub, the, and then some, some symbols in the input, you may hit a uh, right parenthesis, and uh, you know how to use the, uh, and if it's a right parenthesis, you know that you can apply this, uh, uh, Epsilon symbol. So the third approach is uh, ignore uh, ignore input symbols until you hit uh, until you hit a good symbol. What is a good symbol? A good symbol is one which you know what to do when you encounter. And what is a good symbol? It depends upon the current non-terminal symbol 
that you are trying to expand. So these are the kinds of error recovery mechanisms that you can uh, apply when you are doing top-down uh, predictive parsing. But error recovery in uh, parser generators, error reporting and error recovery in parser generators, be it bottom-up or top-down, it is a bit tricky because whatever that you have to do, you have to do it in the framework provided by these parser generators. But if you hand code your parser, then you have a lot of freedom. You exactly know what you are doing and you can have more sophisticated error recovery mechanisms. But uh, this topic is talked the least, but it is uh, the most important uh, when you are designing production quality compilers, like you know, be it GCC, LLVM, whatever the compilers that you, de that you design, the quality of errors that you generate is extremely important, is extremely important. But you are working with uh, some kind of in a project where uh, a small group of people uh, use that tool and who are experts in that uh, space, then possibly, you know, like uh, you may not uh, take the pain to write a hand coded parser because it's a lot of effort because only 10 people are using unless they are paying a lot of money. Uh, and also, so you may just want to use these parser generators and just get away with your job. Okay, although it may have uh, uh, a poor error reporting and recovery mechanism, but still, uh, you know, you can build your tool very fast and uh, get your job done. Right? So that's all on the theory of parsing. And uh, we will conclude uh, this uh, with this lecture, uh, the discussion on uh, the theory of parsing. And in the next class, we will uh, take up uh, control flow graphs and uh, the, the, how the rest of the compiler works. From AST, once you lower, generate a sequence of pre-addressed tuples, how do you optimize that IR? How do you take that IR to assembly code? Uh, how do you do register location? How do you do instruction scheduling? So those are some of the ideas that we will see in the rest of the course. So that's all for today. If you have any questions, please uh, feel free to ask me. Thank you.